Uh, hello, and welcome to my Eurocrypt 2020 talk on how to extract useful randomness from unreliable sources. My name is João, I'm a third-year PhD student at Imperial College, and this is joint work with Divesh Agarpal and Maciej Obramski at CQT at the National University of Singapore, uh, Luisa Siniskalki, who's now at Oros University, and Ivan Visconti from the University of Salerno. So there's a fundamental connection between randomness and cryptography and also many other aspects of computer science. And a lot of tasks fundamentally require randomness in order to be realized. Additionally, a lot of these tasks uh, also require access to a stream of perfectly random or uniformly random bits. Uh, but this is not very realistic because in practice, sources of randomness are not perfect. So for example, they may introduce correlations between different output bits or the bits themselves may not be uniformly distributed. So how do we model such weak sources? Well, as a well-known and very well-studied way of doing this is just by assuming a lower bound on the mean entropy of the source, which is a much more relaxed assumption. So we may say that a weak source has k bits of mean entropy for some k, and this means that the probability of any outcome of the source is upper bounded by 2 to the minus k. So for example, if we're dealing with say n bit strings, then if k equals n, this means we're working only with the uniform distribution, uh, but if k is much smaller than n, then this is a much more relaxed assumption on the structure of the source. Uh, and so now that we have this model for weak sources, uh, a basic and, and very important question we can ask is whether we can extract some perfect randomness from an arbitrary weak source. Or in other words, can we design a deterministic function, an extractor x, that takes as input an arbitrary weak source with k bits of mean entropy and outputs something that is statistically close to uniform. Um, it's very easy to see that this is impossible to achieve, and so we need to take into account alternative settings uh, for randomness extraction. And one of the most well-studied settings, uh, it's what I call here the multi-source setting, where we have access to several independent weak sources, which you may think are sampled from different devices at different locations. Uh, and this setting will be the main focus of this talk. So, Here's the multi-source uh, setting again. Uh, we have here L independent weak sources, each with k bits of mean entropy. And if we accept this model, then we're implicitly trusting the sampling processes that were used to generate each of these weak sources. And this is especially critical when we're dealing with public or shared randomness, as is often the case in cryptography. So the starting point for this work uh, is the question of what happens or what can we still achieve uh, if some of these sources are corrupted by an adversary. And note that in this case, uh, we lose the guarantee of independence, and we also lose the general lower bound on the mean entropy because sources that are uh, adversarially corrupted may even have zero bits of mean entropy. So what we'll see for the rest of the talk is that first, uh, we're going to see how to model this adversarial setting, and then we're going to discuss randomness extraction. So the way we model this uh, adversarial multi-source setting is through what we call shallow sources. And shallow stands for somewhere honest entropic look-ahead. Uh, so a shallow source is composed of L weak sources, which we'll call blocks, uh, to avoid confusion. And for starters, we may assume that these blocks are all independent and they have k bits of mean entropy. But then we allow an adversary to choose L minus T blocks to be corrupted. So for example, here the adversary could corrupt X2 and XL. So T stands also for the number of honest or uncorrupted blocks in the shallow source. Now, when an adversary corrupts a block, uh, he has full control over it and he can set its value to be anything. And on top of that, there's a sampling order on the shallow source. So sampling goes from X1 to XL, which means that the adversary can fix the value of a corrupted block arbitrarily based on the previous samples. So in this case, for example, we sample first from x1, and then x2 is controlled by the adversary, so we can set it to be an arbitrary value based on x1. And then we sample from x3 and so on, until we get to the last block, which is again controlled by the adversary. And so the adversary can set the value of the block to be an arbitrary function of all the previous samples. And the outcome of this process will be the output of the shallow source. Now, I'd like to stress that Throughout this whole process, the adversary knows the positions and the distributions of the T on this blocks, and that these blocks are all independent of each other and they have k bits of mean entropy. Uh, also, I'd like to say that although we motivate this with multi-source extraction, uh, the model for shallow sources is also a very natural model for randomness extraction from the blockchain. 
And um, before we proceed, uh, I'd just like to mention that uh, shell sources fit very naturally into the long line of research on adversarial source models, which uh, started off with seminal works on Santa Vazirani sources or bit fixing sources, and which has seen also some renewed interest with many recent papers, including another paper at Eurocrypt. Um, the shell source model and the type of results we obtain are incomparable to the works I reference here. Uh, so for the rest of the talk, I'll show you what kind of new perspectives we bring to this topic. So the most basic question we can ask about shell sources is whether we can extract perfect randomness from them like we could in the uh, analogous non-adversarial setting. So here we're going to look at the regime where we have a constant fraction of adversarial corruptions and the number of shallow blocks is larger than some fixed constant. And in this case, the answer turns out to be no, we cannot extract perfect randomness. And the way we can see this at a high level is by relating the impossibility of extraction for shallow sources to the impossibility of extraction for so-called p-resettable sources, which were also introduced recently. Uh, in turn, the, the impossibility result for p-resettable sources uh, goes all the way back to, to, to the impossibility result for a special subset of, of Santa Vazirani sources. And this impossibility result is quite strong uh, in the sense that it holds even when the blocks of a shell source are perfectly uniform. So this negative answer leaves us in a, an interesting state of affairs and what we do is we're going to change the question and instead of asking uh, whether we can extract perfect randomness, we're going to ask whether we can extract some sort of useful randomness from shell sources. And by useful here, I mean randomness that can still be used to run a lot of applications. Um, what we'll see is that the answer is yes, because now we'll focus on the next best thing after uniform randomness, which are uh, summer random sources. And a summer random source uh, is composed by several blocks, let's say here L prime blocks. And the only guarantee we have is that there's a subset of T prime good blocks in the sense that the joint distribution of these T prime good blocks is perfectly uniform. While the blocks outside this subset may be arbitrarily correlated with the good blocks. Uh, so for technical reasons, uh, we'll be working mostly with convex combinations of some random sources, which we'll call these convex SR sources. Uh, but this uh, doesn't hurt us because essentially any application that works well with an arbitrary some random source will also work well uh, with an arbitrary convex combination of some random sources. So for the rest of the talk, we'll show that first, some random sources are really useful. I'll show you some concrete applications. And second, I'll show, I'll show you that starting with a shell source with very bad parameters, we can uh, extract great some random sources. So we can run a lot of applications starting with shell sources. Okay, so let us start with the applications, which will also allow us to better understand which parameters of a some random source are particularly important. So the most basic application of some random sources is to the simulation of randomized algorithms with one side error. So as an example, we have here a randomized algorithm uh, with one side error for designing a language L. So this algorithm, when it receives some X in the language, it always out outputs yes, which means it's always correct. But when X is not in the language, then the algorithm may be incorrect with probability one third. Now, in general, this property is only guaranteed under uniform randomness. So maybe if we give a weak source to the randomized algorithm, then if X is not in the language, this algorithm will always be incorrect with defective randomness. Um, however, there's a very simple way of modifying this algorithm so that even if we don't give it uh, uniform random, randomness, but we give it a some random source, then it will still be a one-sided error algorithm for deciding this language. And the way this works is very simple. So we have here our some random source, and we're just gonna run the the original algorithm several times. So first we run it on input X using the randomness from the first block of the summer random source. Uh, then we do the same, but now using the randomness from the second block of the summer random source and so on until we reach the end and we run it through all the blocks. Uh, now we have a bunch of outputs from the original algorithm. And the way we, we decide on our final output is simple. We just output yes, if and only if all the runs of the algorithm output yes. Uh, it's fairly easy to see that this is also a one-sided error algorithm for designing the language L, 
Um, and essentially, this is because we're guaranteed that one of the blocks in the sum of random source will be uniformly distributed. And for that particular block, the algorithm will behave correctly on input x. And that's all we need. So in order to understand uh, which parameters are important, uh, let us look at the runtime of this modified algorithm. Well, if the original algorithm runs in time ta, uh, the new algorithm uh, will run in time l prime times ta. Well, l prime is the number of blocks in the sum of random source. Uh, so given this, uh, it's fairly natural when we want to extract some random sources, we want to extract them, uh, but minimizing the number of blocks in the resulting sum of random source and at the same time, we want to maximize uh, the number of bits in each block of the sum of random source. And this is because we, we would then have more random bits to feed into an algorithm or, or an application in case it needs it. Okay, so I'm just going to briefly mention that we can take this one-sided error idea further and we can apply it to cryptography. And in our paper, we use uh, this idea to design non-interactive primitives that work uh, with a sum of random source as a CRS, as opposed to a perfectly uniform CRS. So in particular, from generic assumptions, we construct uh, non-interactive witness indistinguishable proof systems and non-interactive commitments. And there's also another work where uh, publicly verifiable proof systems are uh, also discussed in the same setting. So as we can see, there are a lot of applications of, of sum of random sources. So, now that we've seen these applications, uh, we can dig deeper into the, this summer extraction from shallow sources or extraction of summer random sources from shallow sources. Uh, the goal here is to design a deterministic function, x, which we call a summer extractor, that takes as input an arbitrary shallow source with given parameters, and such that its output will be statistically close to a convex combination of summer random sources. Uh, so based on what we've seen before, uh, we have a good idea of which parameters we're interested in. So for example, we want to minimize the number of output blocks, L prime, which is the number of uh, blocks in the resulting sum of random source. Uh, we want to minimize uh, the statistical error because this is important, especially for cryptographic applications. Uh, and at the same time, we want, we want to maximize the output block length M, which is the, num the number of bits in each block of the resulting sum of random source. So we're gonna start with a naive construction. So one way of designing a sum or extractor is just to take any two source extractor and apply it to every pair of blocks of a shallow source. The reason why this works is that as long as we have two honest blocks in the shallow source, then the output of the extractor on these two honest blocks will be close to uniform. And this is enough to get us something close to a sum of random source. However, there are some downsides to this naive construction. The first one is that the number of blocks in the resulting sum of random source is quadratic in the shallow source, in the number of blocks in the, of the shallow source. And second, uh, we can only get negligible error, which is useful for cryptography, uh, when the mean entropy of the honest shallow blocks is very large. So natural question, can we do better than this? And the answer is that yes, we can do much better and I'm just, I'm going to present this to you right now. So here's our uh, new summer extractor for shallow sources. I'm gonna present it to you in the high entropy setting. So honest blocks of a shallow source now have very high entropy. And let's say that we have here these five blocks, uh, two of them are corrupted by an adversary. And now instead of using any two source extractor, we're gonna use a very special object, which is an unbalanced two source extractor. Uh, which has a property that the, the left source can have low entropy while the right source must have high entropy. Uh, there's a beautiful construction of this object by Ras, uh, but we can also construct them from strong seeded extractors. So the way our approach works is through a kind of a sliding window technique. So starting with the first output block, we just look at the first two shallow blocks and we take the first shallow block as the left source of the unbalanced extractor and the second shallow block as the right source of the unbalanced extractor. Uh, and then for the second output block, we just slide the window, which means that now we take the first two shallow blocks as the left source of the unbalanced extractor and the third shallow block as the right source of the unbalanced extractor. And we can keep going in this fashion and get the next two output blocks. And what I, what I claim here is that 
the blocks which have on the, the, the output blocks which have honest write sources um, are jointly uniformly distributed. Or in other words, I claim that Y2 and Y4 are jointly close to uniform uh, because they have Y2 as X3 as its right source and Y4 as X5 as its right source, and they're both honest. So let's see why Y2 is close to uniform. Well, the argument is not very complicated. We just look at the left source and note that it contains enough mean entropy because X1 is honest. And second, uh, X3 by the properties of the shallow source, X3 is independent of the previous sources and uh, it has high mean entropy. Now we want to see that Y2 and Y4 are, um, are jointly close to uniform. And this is also simple. We can uh, consider an arbitrary fixing of Y2 and show that with high probability over this fixing, then Y4 is going to be close to uniform. And again, this we follow the same type of argument. So we look at the left source and note that it still contains enough mean entropy even when you condition on all the previous output blocks. Um, and if you look at uh, this right source, X5, well, by, again, by the properties of the shallow source, by the, because the adversary behaves in a non-line way, uh, X5 will be independent of all the previous blocks and it will have high mean entropy, which means that we're done. So we can extrapolate this to the general setting and what we get is an, an output that is statistically close to a convex combination of some random sources uh, with very good parameters. So for example, the number of blocks of the resulting some random source is now linear in the number of shallow blocks, while in the naive construction it was at least quadratic. Uh, the number of good blocks in the some random source, which is useful for uh, success probability amplification, for example, when you saw these algorithms before, uh, is only one less than the number of honest blocks in the shallow source, which means that this construction gives a useful uh, some random source even when there are only two honest blocks in the shallow source. And besides that, the statistical error and the output block length of our summary extractor are essentially the best uh, we can hope for. Now, the summary extractor we just saw has great parameters, but it has the downside that it really only works if the honest blocks of the shallow source have very high mean entropy. However, the good news is that we can modify this construction in order for it to work also for low entropy shallow sources. Uh, in other words, shallow sources where the honest blocks have mean entropy delta times n for delta an arbitrarily small constant. And I won't give details, but the rough idea is that we can combine this high entropy construction with so-called summer condensers, which are relaxations of summer extractors, which actually work for arbitrary weak sources, and which have been well studied in the literature. Um, actually, there are uh, several beautiful constructions with great parameters. And the idea is that we first take the shallow blocks, we run them through summer condensers, and then we, we apply similar ideas to what we saw in the previous slide. And the outcome is uh, that we get essentially the same parameters, except we get an extra few constants um, depending on delta. Uh, but the important thing here now is that we handle low entropy shallow sources, and this is a huge improvement uh, over the naive summer extractor. Now, to finalize uh, this talk, I just want to discuss with you one last impossibility result. So the previous summer extractors we saw um, exploit the structure of shallow sources in a very fundamental way. So a natural question is whether we can still extract useful summer random sources without exploiting this structure. Or in other words, can we extract useful summer random sources if we just treat a shallow source as an arbitrary weak source with comparable length and comparable entropy? Uh, in this case, there is one naive summer extractor, which is obtained as follows. Just take any strong seeded extractor and apply it to X, where you, take, you treat X as an arbitrary weak source with sufficient, with sufficient mean entropy, and you get one block for each value of the seed. Uh, now, the outcome of this summer extractor will be statistically close to a summer random source, uh, but the downside is that extractor lower bounds imply that whatever the extractor you use here, uh, if you want negligible statistical error, then uh, you need a super polynomial number of blocks in the summer random source. Uh, and this means that this summer random source cannot be used in efficient applications, so it's not a useful summer random source. Of course, this is a very specific summer extractor for weak sources. So now the question is, can we do better for weak sources? 
And it turns out that the answer is no. So for example, one of the results we prove is that any summer extractor for arbitrary weak sources uh, with comparable length and entropy to shallow sources uh, basically requires a super polynomial number of output blocks or number of resulting blocks in the summer random source uh, if you want negligible statistical error, which you do for cryptographic applications, and if the output block length of this summer extractor isn't extremely small. Uh, what this means is that we cannot extract useful summer random sources uh, from arbitrary weak sources. Uh, the way the proof goes is that we relate uh, summer extractors for weak sources to so-called randomness dispersers, for which you know very good lower bounds, and then we just translate these lower bounds to the summer extraction setting. Uh, I'd like to mention that although we present only this result here, we actually in the paper have results, impossibility results, that apply to even weaker notions of summer extraction from weak sources, which means we have a very strong separation between summer extraction from shallow sources and summer extraction from comparable weak sources. Now, to finalize, I'd just like to leave here one interesting open problem. So, uh, the result we present here uh, only gives something interesting uh, when m isn't very small. Um, but it would be interesting to prove an analogous result even when the output block length of the summer extractor is extremely small, like, say, m equals 1 bit. Uh, we have some partial results about this in the paper in a and in a follow-up work, um, but we still haven't uh, gotten to the general case. Okay. So we've got to the end of the talk, uh, so let me just sum up what we saw. Well, first, we saw that shallow sources are a natural model for an adversarial multi-source setting. And although we cannot extract perfect randomness from shallow sources, we can extract uh, some random sources with great parameters, even when we have a shallow source with very bad parameters. Like, for example, it only has two honest blocks. Uh, we also saw that some random sources are extremely useful for algorithms and for cryptography. And we also saw that we really need to exploit the structure of shallow sources uh, to extract useful summer random sources. Uh, that's all for me. Uh, thanks for watching and bye bye.